What's up guys? Welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. Now this is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, why don't we jump into a review? Today we're looking at the Scarabus. Stick around. So we've got an interesting one today. We are looking at the Scarabus. Scarabus is what's called a bastard malt or just an undisclosed malt, meaning we don't know what distillery this one comes from. We do know that it's from Isla and that's about it. Uh, and there's actually a few of these on the market. And overall, I would say it's a pretty mixed bag. I have had a few that really worked, but for the most part, I've been less than impressed. And the reason for that is that most bottles like this are young. And I mean, really young. Um, of course, if you're gonna do a younger whiskey, best to make it a peated whiskey at a younger age peat is going to be more intense more in your face but um yeah sometimes they're just too young they come off hot they come off completely off balance now i recently reviewed smokehead and that wasn't a great whiskey but it was all right it was decent i enjoyed it so i might be on a roll with these undisclosed islas um our Scarabus here released in 2019. It is owned by Hunter Lang. Hunter Lang also owns the Ardnaho distillery on Isla, although this is not from that distillery. Uh, we really don't know much about this one. We don't know where it's from. Some people online have speculated that this might be Kalila, uh, as much of these undisclosed Isla malts are, and yeah, that's possible. Anyway, we don't know. Um, Scarabus here means a uh, rocky place in Old Norse if you care. And uh, there's actually a few of these Scarabus bottlings on the market. We have a 10 year old at 46%. We have a no age stated one at 46%. And we have a cast strength offering. Now the 10 year old is nowhere to be found in Taiwan. So my choices were between uh, the no age stated at 46 and the no age stated at cast strength. And I opted for the 46. And I'll explain why I went for that lower ABV in a second. Um, I think whiskeys like this are interesting. We have a lot of them on the market. There's a lot of them out there. They must be selling. They must be popular. And it clearly doesn't matter what distillery they're coming from as long as they're a single malt from Isla. So Isla is practically a brand in itself at this point. And you don't even have to spend too much time aging these whiskeys. Maybe three, four, five years in some casks. Then put it on the market. Tell people it's an Isla single malt and it'll sell. And that's not a bad thing. If people didn't want these whiskeys, they wouldn't buy them. Clearly they do want them, clearly they will buy them, and it's just a matter of supply and demand. So we have a lot of these things on the market these days. As I said earlier, I think it's a pretty mixed bag for the most part, unimpressive, but once in a while, we do get a gem in there. So why don't we find out if our Scarabus is one of those gems? Why don't we hop into our review, see what this whiskey's all about, and in the meantime, if you can kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. So as is often the case with these undisclosed malts, our specs are pretty decent here. This one comes in at 46%, as I mentioned earlier. It's also gonna be non-chill filtered, and it's naturally colored. So we have a tinted bottle here. We can't make out the color of our whiskey, but I'll show it to you in the glass. I don't know if that'll come out on camera, but there's very little color to this whiskey. It's almost new make, and that's fine. At least there's no colorant. We like it that way. Uh, beyond that, bottle-wise, beautiful look to this. I think it's uh, very unique. It's very ornate. I feel like it might have been inspired by some maybe compass box bottlings. Um, but yeah, great presentation here. I'm going to give this four and a half out of five. Of course, this is from an undisclosed distillery, so information will be limited, but they do tell us uh, no artificial coloring and no chill filtering on the back, which is great. We have some tasting notes on the back here, little marketing blurb on the front. Um, that's about it. I think it's a great look. Stands out on the shelf. Let's try the nose. So young, like really young. <laughs> yeah, so like new make. Uh, we have some citrus notes in here. We have some peat in here, uh, some brine. There's some honey. We have some uh, pine resin, some faint vanilla and bubble gum in this. Um, just super young. Let's try the palette. Mm. Okay, um, not as young as the nose suggested. I mean, it's definitely still spirit driven, but I was expecting something a lot harsher based on the nose. It's actually not that bad. Flavors, uh, lemon lime, seawater, white sugar, some grain, 
roasted meat and rubber. And now the finish. Mm. So finish is my favorite part here. Things start to round out a little bit more. Um, we're getting more of that bubble gum. We got peat, some gentle oak in here, more of that pine resin. We have the roasted meat in here. We have some burnt sugar cane and more of that rubber. Uh, length would be medium. So I'm glad that I got the 46% version of this whiskey. Uh, I did try the cast strength and honestly it was a little bit too much for me. Like I said, this is a really young whiskey. Now a lot of you out there are going to opt for the cast strength as most of us normally would do. Um, but the problem with that one is that while yes, you do have the flavors cranked up to 11 in that one, it also brings more of the imperfections to the fore. Uh, meanwhile, if you opt for the 46%, at least in my opinion, it reins in some of that heat and some of that youth. Luckily, a lot of these undisclosed Isla whiskeys do come with a cast strength option and a lower ABV option. Usually that's gonna be around 46%. And I think moving forward, I'm always gonna go for the 46. Like I said, it just calms down some of those rougher edges. Um, whiskeys like this, of course you're getting big, loud peat, but as far as I'm concerned, they take the youth a little bit too far. They are just too young. And you know, what you get is definitely a peat monster, but all nuance, all sophistication just kind of goes out the window. And you know, that's fine. Not every whiskey needs to be sophisticated and I do like me a good peat monster, but personally speaking, I'm willing to pay more of a premium. I'm willing to go to a higher price point to get a better version of that peat monster. You know, stuff like, I don't know what, Ardbeg. So Ard, uh, Ardbeg Ugadal, Ardbeg Cory Vrek and stuff like that. Yeah, you're paying more, but you're getting a better whiskey. As far as I'm concerned, it is worth the price hike. Now, of course, if you're buying Ardbegs, you're going to expect more depth and complexity. It's a completely different category of whiskey. And I will say this, within its category, Scarabus, not bad. I would say it's one of the better ones. Um, is it young? Yeah. Is it too young? Yeah. Uh, but it's one of the better ones. It works. It pulls it off, kind of. Um, for me, the worst part of this whiskey was the nose. Uh, it came off really immature, really spirity. Luckily, the palate in this is much tamer, and the finish in this whiskey is actually pretty nice. Uh, for me, the highlight of this whiskey, definitely going to be those meaty notes. We have like the salted, uh, roasted red meat flavor in here that I think is absolutely delicious. Some other nice flavors would be uh, that pine resin in there. We have some bubblegum notes. So some unique flavors adds to a unique character. This is much less generic than some similar offerings out there. And I also like that they didn't put any kind of rushed sherry finish on this or any E150A, which is caramel colorant. Now, I'm not kidding when I say this is actually one of the lightest whiskeys I've ever had in my life that is an actual new make. So it would be very tempting for a brand to put caramel colorant into a whiskey like this, but they didn't. So we have a cool bottle, we have good specs, we have an honest presentation, and this is one of the better offerings in its category. Uh, my score for this one's gonna be 82. It's still not my cup of tea. But if you're watching this review, presumably you're okay with these kinds of whiskeys, which is to say young, no age stated, undisclosed Isla single malts. And if this is the kind of whiskey you enjoy, you're gonna like it a whole lot more than I do. So clearly I'm not a huge fan of this one, but it does what it does. It does it pretty well. Uh, you do get a whole lot of peat in this one and you have some admittedly good quality spiritiness, which is at the core of the character here. So obviously this one's not gonna be for people who don't like peat monsters. It's not gonna be for people who are sensitive to youth in whiskey. It is gonna be for people who like stuff like Smokehead, who like the Iliac, who like Finn Logan. If those whiskeys are your cup of tea, try this one. So these undisclosed Isla single malts are usually pretty good value. You're paying way less than you would be for a branded single malt, and you're getting something that's a lot younger and more punchy than I think what most brands would want to put into their core range. But that is what a lot of people want, so it's win-win. They get something that's cheap, punchy, and powerful. Uh, personally speaking, these are the kinds of whiskeys that I'll buy once in a while, and if they happen to be one of the better ones, sure, I will enjoy them, but not stuff I'll come back to too often. It's just not my style. All right, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, hit subscribe down below, click that little bell icon, and of course, smash the like. Now, I do want to hear from you. Have you tried the Scarabus? Was it the no-age stated one, the 10-year-old, the cast strength? 
How did you feel about it? And finally, down in the comments, let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.